Welcome to the last epoch and to this beginner guide. Over the next whatever weeks, how long it takes for you to watch all these videos, I'm going to create a lot of videos truly focused on beginners, but also advanced builds and build guides for the last epoch. But with this first video, I want to quickly get you up to speed so you can get going with the game. The first thing is really, last epoch, what is it? It is a so-called ARPG, an action role-playing game. An action really just comes down from you run around like this, Lady over here, and then you cast your spells. Or you buff your minions so they, they kill everything, and then you get gold, you get your your level ups, and at the bottom you have your skills, and then you get you have items. So if you play Diablo 4 and Diablo or Path of Exile, it's pretty similar. Very, very similar. Except for one key key detail that is different, which makes it so great for me in my eyes. And that is that all your characters, no matter how many characters you actually make in this game, they all share the items. Now, of course, some of these has le have level restrictions, like this needs level 23. But they are items you can run right from the beginning, from the very first. And the great thing about this is, you are actually incentivized to play all the classes in the game. Because you can level them up super fast. You can get them to level 60 right away, where you can actually start... Hitting and play with your builds and all that kind of thing. And you have a lot of builds because while this is all similar to other games, like you have your you have your mana at the bottom, right? You have your health on the left, you have your skills down here. And your items, as I said, items, and you also have a crafting mechanic over here. Just why are you uh, just aggro some mobs here for uh, accidentally, didn't mean to, but whatever. Um, but the key thing is every single spell in the game. Every single one of these spells, all of these, and this is just the Acolyte class, right? This times five, each spell or skill has its own passive tree. Where you can turn it around fully, you can turn some lightning damage into cold damage, you can turn fire into void damage, you can turn void damage into lightning, fire, poison, whatever. Except down here it says... Um, no, it doesn't. Okay, no mind. I thought this was a lightning uh, skill. Whatever. So, there are unlimited possibilities for builds in this game for your characters. Right? And I will show you all details on how to do this, what to, what to focus on, and I will go into great detail on what to do. But this is what makes this game so great. All the skills, see, they all have different passive trees. Um, you can scale, I mean, all, each skill only goes to level 20, so it's not insane. Um, or 22 or more if you have items around it, but the main key thing is this gives you a lot of replayability for the game and you can try so many things, especially this also because you can give your insane overpowered items to your level 1 character so you can just shred for the campaign, get up to speed fast and try your builds. This is why I love this so much. Plus, you can also, as you saw up here, if you go to a skill, you can respec it, right? Meaning you can drop the entire skill if you fucked up or you think it doesn't suck, it doesn't work with your build. You can drop it and try another one. Then you can skill another skill you have at your disposal. Whatever, it doesn't matter. You can once you chose your mastery, which I will go to in a second. This is locked, but everything else is completely interchangeable. You can even respec your entire passive tree. This is the passive tree for your character, not for your skills. And this is just for the acolyte. Then you have your masteries over here. Each character has three masteries. Necromancer, Warlock and Lich, for example, for the Ecolite. And you can respec this entire thing with... There's some, some people you can talk to in the game. You can respec these all with in-game gold. So you can remove these and then try different ones. You remove these again, try something else, see how the damage it does. So you can figure out your build no problem forever. Even better... Even though you have chosen a mastery like Necromancer, you can still tech into the others as well, up to the middle. You can't get the crazy stuff on the right, but you can get the base ones for the other class as well. So there is even more unlimited potential for builds. So you would just never be bored with this game, alright? There is so much to do, so much to try and figure out and whatever. So this is actually kind of crazy. This is why I like this game so much. Other than that, it's pretty much the same as any other game. You have your characters and you have your classes. So let's look at this, for example, for a second. Actually, before we go here, yes, let's just cover this first so you can get you up to speed. How to set up your character properly. So let's just dive right into this.
you want to decide between an offline or an online character, right? You can play offline in the top left, but then you don't have access to cosmetics or even all your stash. I have one offline character because when the game launched, the servers were down, so I had to play this for stream, but I never touched it any anytime ever again. You don't have access to your online character stashes, all right? So offline is really, I don't know why, why anyone would do this, but you can't do it. Just go with online, that's the best thing. Then down here, it says create online character. You click that, very simple. Now you have to choose your realm. That's a bunch of things. Right now, the cycle one, last epoch 1.0 and legacy is exactly the same. Okay, there's no difference whatsoever. But if you have a cyclic character, it does not have access to the items and stashes from your legacy character. Right, if I go to legacy, this is where, for example, I have all my characters because this is how I started. They can share items within each other. The stashes are the same. If I go with my necromancer to the stash or with the shaman, it doesn't matter. I can access the same items, all the idols, all the weapons, everything. All right. But legacy, as it says over here, doesn't have leaderboards. If you want to fight in the arena and get on top of the leaderboard, then the legacy is not to play. You have to play with the cycles. This is also the main idea because it resets leaderboards. Why you might want to choose cycles is going forward, they will usually have bonuses you notice from the other games like path of exile or diablo that's called leaks or seasons where you get new fancy things new items for example that only the psychic character has or new mechanics that are introduced with the psychic characters etc etc so this is the idea what you want why you want to do this but for example in my case i have five legacy characters if i now start a psychic character he has nothing because I do not have access to the stashes of my legacy characters. So I start entirely from scratch. Okay, if you want to start entirely from zero with nothing to boot and you want to go slowly through the campaign as it was designed initially, then you do this. Okay, so this is the realms. There will come more. I guess it says down here, usually they last around three to four months, the cycles. So that means somewhere in May or June, I think the next one starts from when this video is released with new things and new stuff. Um, obviously this is recommended because it has the new, the new stuff usually in it. I'm not going to create one anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> but this is what you need to know about the realms. You can still switch them later, by the way, and uh, not later. You can still switch them here in your character selection. Not once you've actually chosen and are in-game, then it is done. Then you have your five characters, right? As it is right now. And each character has three masteries. That's three, right? Three. <laughs> that makes it to 15 overall classes you can play. You click on one of the characters. It shows the masteries here. It doesn't matter. You can't choose it yet anyway. It just shows you what skills it has. And then you can type in your name. Alex Rune Master. And you click continue because there is something more important coming now. You can still go back and choose another one. You can create unlimited characters, by the way, and it sort of is also the idea with Last Epoch that you play all the classes, all the characters, and try all of them. This is why it's made so easy to replay the entire game if you share your stashes with your other characters, because then you have all the items. Now you get to choose, again, here can, you can change the realm again to Legacy and Cycle. Now you're going to choose the mode. Normal means, uh, people also call this Softcore or Hardcore. Softcore means when you die, you just respawn, or you have to do dungeon again, but that's it. Nothing crazy about it. You die, you just try it again. Hardcore means when your character dies, it will no longer be able to be played in the, in the regular cycle. So once you die with your hardcore character, it is sort of degraded into a softcore character. And it also loses the gear, right? Very important. If you die with your gear, it's gone, okay? So hardcore is really hardcore. You, you have to know what you're doing. If you die, feels bad. You cannot die with this ever. Okay? Good. So I wouldn't recommend this for, for new players. Next thing is the challenges. This is really, in most cases, you don't need any of this. This is usually how you would create your regular character. Solo fund account means... See, it says here, this character will not be able to party with or obtain items found by other players. 
Meaning, if you are in a party and someone else finds an item that you like, at some point you gain these resonances, right? That's what it's called. It's items through which you can share items with your with your partner, if you play together a lot. You can't do it right away. You can't give your new character insane items or your new, your new friend, your new insane items. It doesn't work. You cannot change or exchange with your friend any items at all. But it shares the same stash and materials with your other solo account characters. So here it gets a bit difficult. Within the same game mode and cycle. So if you play normal all the time, okay? Like for example, I have five normal legacy characters. So this solo account found character can now share with all the other ones. Just I can get all the stash items, etc. If I go to hardcore, I can't because hardcore is a different game mode. And this character then cannot trade or get the same stash item as my existing ones. Okay? This doesn't work. So this makes it a little bit difficult. This is why it says challenges, right? If you don't tick this and your hardcore character can easily just share all the items with your existing ones. With your existing normal ones, for example. The next thing is the solo character found, which is the top, top notch thingy. With this one, you cannot share any items at all. So this is basically like completely starting from scratch. Anything you find with this, you cannot share with anyone and you cannot get other items from other characters. Nothing. It's basically completely from zero. Basically, if your new cycle starts, this is the same thing, pretty much, okay? So this is challenges you can do. You don't have to. It doesn't really mean anything other than you can brag about it. Hardcore, I guess, is something you can try at some point. But for most people, the normal is just enough. And basically, the solo account found just means you can still trade your stash items with your other characters of the same game mode. And the solo character found means you can trade nothing. This is why it says solo character found and the other is solo account. You can switch your entire account items, but this can only with this character and nothing else. Very simple. And both of these mean you can never trade with other people in your party. Even though I personally think the party trading system isn't that good anyway. Because um, you have to play a lot to get these resonances to trade items. It's a bit weird, but I guess they wanted to stop people from abusing the system. Anyway, this is how I do it, and then if you create character, you start straight with the, the season, which I'm not going to do now because I don't want to do this with this character in general. So this is how the character creation works and the things you need to know about setting it up. Again, the, the biggest thing you will most likely ever deal with is the realms when the new one starts, the new season, but it will show it on the screen anyway. I just wanted to make it so you know what these things, especially char character founds, actually mean. All right, welcome back. This was another video I actually had online. Just put it in there. Seamless, right? No problem. Now you have chosen your character. Actually, hold up. And then you have your five classes, right? But each class, for example, the Primalist, has the masteries. These are subclasses. For example, the Primalist is a strength character, right? Strong man. This, this hit it pretty hard. But if you go, for example, for the Shaman over here, the Mastery, you turn this whole thing into a strength int scenario because now you have spells like tornado earthquake or avalanche or even the storm totem you want to cast druid is strength and dexterity so to speak because you now need dexterity to because you are now in druid form or in weber form and actually hitting yourself and need to be wielding you'd be able to wield things beastmaster is a summon minion kind of character same thing with the mage for example, there is the Spellblade, which is a melee attacking mage who can enchant his weapon and can make it more powerful. These kind of things. The Sorcerer is just straight in, in you just cast things all the time, this is all you do. So the Masteries give you a base class, sort of a deviation of what it is initially. You can go into different directions with it. Again, as it says here, Mastery class is chosen during the campaign. This will be set for this character. But as I said, for example, I have the Necromancer, you saw him earlier. If I find a new build for the Necromancer, I can just respec everything and try the new build. I don't, ha I don't even have to play the campaign again. I just use that build with that character and then I just go with it again. Super crazy. So basically, you just want to end up with 15 characters because this comes down to 15 classes, right? Five characters with each with three classes. 
subclasses rather. So you want to end up with 15 characters so you can spec around the builds all the time in the end. Pretty simple. And this is super powerful in my eyes. And it's very obvious you have the Acolyte over here, which is a necromancer kind of evil dark lady, dark magician, so to speak. And the necromancer is actually a class I would recommend to start with. Because the minions do everything for you. You cast all the minions and they do all the damage and you just try to survive. It's very simple, you don't have to focus on too many things, you just build your minions. The only drawback is that damage isn't really easy to see because it doesn't show you directly how much it is. I will go into later how to actually see how much damage your minions do, etc. Another good starting class is the Sentinel, especially the Paladin, because this is a strength character and you have a lot of healing skills. So you're basically unkillable with the Sentinel. In the end, you can try whatever class you want. And it depends a lot on when you watch this video, what class will currently be good, because balance changes happen all the time. So I can't really tell you which one is great. Right now, for example, the Warlock is very strong. Or the Marksman Rogue. Um, so yeah, it depends on where you are. For example, the Shaman on the Primal List is currently pretty bad. <laughs> so yeah, I can't really tell this. But the Necromancer is generally always good because you get the minions that do all the shit for you, right? So you don't have to worry about this. Or the Sentinel because he heals himself. Again, you will be ending up playing all the classes anyway, unless you hate the game throughout the game, I don't know. But um, there is so much to discover and unravel and so many builds. Definitely also check out maxroll.gg, great website that has a lot of leveling guides that get you to level 70 fasty, fast and endgame guides. The end game of the game is where we find ourselves here when we go to the map and this is the end of time and the monoliths of fate. This is where you find your end game. These are procedurally generated areas you can keep playing over and over and over again to get your blessings which give you buffs right and empower them to make them even stronger with higher corruption to drop better items and, and you can even gain prophecies for that in your circle of fortune. I will go over all of this all right. Don't be overwhelmed. This is all very easy. You just have to see it once. But the monoliths is where you want to get to. Nobody wants to play through the same campaign 150 times, right? Um, so this is why you have the monoliths of fate at the end, where you can keep playing over and over again and try your builds and drop new crazy items and try new builds, new playstyle, etc. So this is where you want to get to. But if this is your first time with Last Epoch, just go through the campaign, enjoy it. I liked it a lot. The, the whole time shift things with the epochs and the shards of it. I like the, the campaign a lot. They will also be adding more to the campaign going forward. They said there is still two more chapters, I believe, coming. Or three, I'm not even sure. But the monoliths is pretty much the end game you want to get to. This is your where you test your builds, where you test your characters and your items and all that kind of shenanigans. And you can even also, this is something you will spend a lot of time with also, is the legendary items because these you can craft. But it's not as straightforward as you think it is. Like this is a unique item. This has legendary potential on it. That means I can craft it into a legendary. It has even more power. Don't want to go into detail. This is just something you will spend a lot of time with. So the end game in this game has so much you can do. So once you get up to speed fast, which this series will help you with. You're just going to sit in this game forever. I'm sorry. This is your addiction. This is your future. This is where you are. All right. Fine. <laughs> okay, so this now gets you up to speed with the you can now start playing the game, but the next video will be about the classes, what they are, how they work, and yeah, even more so on which one to choose. I hope this first video helped to get you give you an idea of how this game is played and what it really is. Um, you should be very familiar with it if you play Diablo or Path of Exile. Um Personally, I would say it's a bit deeper than Diablo 4, but not as deep as Path of Exile. It's sort of per perfectly in the middle between these two games. So you can get into this game easily, but it doesn't get boring quickly as Diablo, for example, does. So I hope this helped and I will see you in the next video. So stay tuned.